All right, y'all, so I have COVID. At 36 weeks pregnant, I have COVID. So, this is where we are at the moment. I am actually contracting. I have a high blood pressure. I came straight here to the hospital from a doctor's appointment. So it's been a day. Um, just got done doing a little bit of vomiting. I'm kind of nauseous. Um, just waiting for everybody to come in. They're going to do some testing and everything. And it's not really much to say right now, but um, I'm just waiting for the plan to see what's going to happen. So I'll let you guys know. Okay, y'all, so it's currently 12.20. I'm in the room, not doing anything. This thing hurts so bad. If y'all know about the IV in the hand, it hurts. IV is the worst part to me, but my junkie room. And let me get back on the monitor. Good morning, y'all. I'm gonna have my voice. It is the next day, the 26th, and it's what time is it? I'm sorry. I mean, it's 9 31. Y'all, y'all know I still ain't seen my nurse here. I pressed this call button, but it don't work. So, they're about to piss me off. But there's no updates. They did insert the balloon last night. And it kind of hurts still. It doesn't hurt as bad as it did. But I think it might be about to come out. I'm having a contraction now. Oh, yeah. Okay, I was supposed to bend back, y'all, but God, my balloon came out. It just broke my water. I'm so tired. But, um, Now I'm starting to feel the contractions more. First they just felt like cramps, and then they ain't got some of the Reese's. Anyways, I'm just really tired. Huh? Now I can't eat. No, no. But um, oof, you just tired. You just notice how clear my face been with this baby. My face been so clear with this baby. I just want to sleep. Don't worry, when I get my epidural, I'm going to sleep. I think they said I was like four or five centimeters. So I don't need to wait too much longer to get my epidural before I can't get it no more, even though I'm still not really feeling much pain. But they said they're seeing a the contraction. So I'm just not feeling like that. I got the Pitocin going. Up there. My fluids are right there. And my Pitocin is right here. I'm on, I think I'm at eight with the Pitocin. She said they go up to 20, but they usually never contraction. But 
They usually never get to 20. Um, it's a big one. But they usually never get to 20. So yeah. Hopefully I don't get to 20. Well, I doubt it. But um, I didn't want to get my epidural too early because then you, it wears off. So I'm trying to hold out as long as I can before I get it because I want it to work when I'm pushing. Even though they take it out, but I want it to still be, you know, in my system real good. And I don't have to feel that. Well, I feel like no matter what, you're still going to feel that ring of fire no matter what. But, yeah. I'm just trying to be comfortable. Y'all, they broke my water too. And, ugh, painful, painful. I hate when they have to do that. It hurts. It hurt it, but they did it. And, yeah. So now I'm just leaking like a faucet. But, yeah. So, this is my update. It is currently, what time is it bad? Even though I didn't get my glasses on. It's 4.11, so. Hopefully he'll be here soon. But I got you guys done. He's here. I know you don't like the people. Hey y'all, please don't mind my hair. So, new and baby boy. Hold on. I'm just sitting here. I'm ready to go home. So ready. Um, he got circumcised today, so he's not in the best mood. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just ready to go home. I'm trying to get my blood pressure together. It's going down slowly, but y'all, these beds are uncomfortable. Like, they got me in the same room. Yeah, I got COVID, but I'm, I feel like a stowaway. Like, I'm in the back. I'm by myself. I can't even, if I look out the window, it's nothing but buildings. I've been here for three days. Three days. I miss my other babies. I just want to go home to my bed. I'm waiting for my doctor to come in. Like, I'm just ready to go home. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to my video. Um, as you've seen in the first couple clips, um, I had my baby. That was two weeks ago, so I am two weeks postpartum. Uh, yeah, it's been a long journey. I had COVID. I dealt with preeclampsia. So I had all that going on after I had the baby. Dealing with high blood pressure, um, and you know, just the symptoms of the COVID plus the preeclampsia coming together, kind of making it a little bit harder for the doctors to get everything under control. But it is getting there, everything's going good. I've been seeing the OB every week since I've been home. So I went, once I came home, I went. Monday, I went last Monday, and I'll go this Monday again for them to do for them to do blood pressure checks, and then I'll go back for my regular six week checkup, and then I'll go back for my tubal y'all. I'm getting my tubes um squared away so we don't have no more babies. But yeah. Wednesday the twenty fifth, I went to my um appointment. Um, mind you, three weeks prior we had set everything up, me and my OB for a uh, induction on the 28th of january so either way he was supposed to come i turned 37 weeks that friday on the 27th and then on the 28th um there was going to do my induction because i was now 37 weeks and which is considered full term so baby was good to go i was good to go because my baby had some um issues with growth up and down issues with growth and my hypertension and plus the doctor knew that i had other kids that i wanted to schedule around so I 
But of course, nothing ever happens how I want it. So the week before my induction, literally like a week and two days, my daughter got sick, then husband got sick, everybody got sick. Come to find out it was COVID. Long story short, I was the last one to get it. I had, um, at first I did not think it was COVID. I promise you I didn't. I didn't think any of us had that. You know, I wasn't thinking about that. Um, it's been how long and we haven't had it yet and we've been being safe. And of course I get pregnant and my last week I get COVID. I knew I was going to the doctors that following Wednesday. So it was the weekend when we found all this out. So it wasn't nothing I could do anyway. Um, I already kind of knew what the doctors were going to tell me, but I didn't think any that anything that was going on was going on. So I went to the doctors on the 25th, which was Wednesday. They were doing my blood pressure and my weight and everything. I had lost six pounds. So of course I was sick. I wasn't feeling good. So I wasn't really eating, but I had lost six pounds. Girl, she was like, you lost six pounds. And she was kind of like, shocked at the same time and i'm like me too i was shocked too and i was like oh mm. and then um mind you a couple days like t monday my taste or sunday sunday i want to say saturday sunday my taste started getting a little off my smell started getting a little eventually i lost my taste and my smell um and i let them know that at my appointment and that they should you know test me there just to you know be positive and everything so they um so anyway back to the appointment i was at the appointment i lost six pounds then she took my blood pressure my blood pressure was super high mind you every time i went i was going twice a week every week instead of once a week every week i was going twice a week every week and i would be put on the nst monitor for the baby so you know how when you're in the hospital they got the bands around your stomach and all that so i was doing that every week also once every week and i was getting that ultrasound once every week no, twice. I had a lot going on, y'all. So, um, when the doctor came in to check my blood pressure, it was the same. She looked at the monitor. She already had said, um, since my blood pressure is where it was at, she wanted to send me to the ER just to make sure everything's okay, to check for preeclampsia and all that, because that's what they were, you know, talking about since the beginning for me. So, um... They wanted to do the blood work and everything, check and make sure it wasn't preeclampsia, starting to, you know, do its thing. And I told them I wanted a COVID test and all that. So they said they'll do that at the ER. They was going to call labor and delivery, let them know I was on my way. But at, when she was looking at the monitor, she was like, you're contracting. Like, you're having contractions. They're like a minute apart. I wasn't feeling them. She said, yeah, they're small, but they're, you know, back to back. And you might not feel them, you know. And I was like, yeah, I don't feel them. And she was like, the, you know, all that could play a part in it. You probably were going to go into labor eventually without, you know, everything else that was going on. So send me to the ER. I get there and I get in, you know, the room and everything. And that's the video that y'all seen. Um, Yeah. <sighs> Trying to make this quick. I don't want it to be super long. And um, then it came time to for the induction part. They did the balloon which I hate, it hurts. If y'all ever had a balloon, it's worse than them putting the catheter in because it's, you know, to me it's just bad. And after that, I got my, um, they did the little pill that they break one pill into like four pieces or two pieces and they put um, the pill inside you to help you uh, dilate. But that didn't really do anything for me. I think that got me like fingertip or one or two centimeters. But the balloon, it helped me get to like four or five centimeters, which was good because I literally skyrocketed from that. So the I had got to, I was stuck, y'all, at like five to six centimeters. I was stuck for hours, y'all, hours. Um, I eventually got my epidural, but even though everything wasn't too strong, mind you with my epidural, it's like it took to the left side, but with the right side, I still felt everything on my right side. I mean, the contractions were fair. They weren't too bad. I felt like this go round is kind of, you know, I expected. It was what I expected. And I knew what to expect. So it wasn't really that bad. It's kind of like a just breathe through it thing for me. That first time, y'all, them contractions was kicking my butt. Kicking my butt. But the second, I mean, well, this third go round, it wasn't too bad. I honestly didn't think it was that bad. I knew what to expect. Um, I do feel like this kind of went better than all my other um, 
labors. I felt like this kind of went a little bit quicker than everybody else. He came zero to 100, y'all. So um, they had checked me. I was five to six centimeters at hour. She checked me. I was like, a, it had to be like an hour from when she, the one doctor checked me, then the next doctor came back and checked me. And I was still five to six centimeters, y'all, still. I was getting so irritated. I was like this close for, to telling them to schedule me a C-section, even though I don't want it, never wanted it. I always wanted to do natural because I just felt like the healing process for the C-section was just too much for me. So I always wanted to do it naturally. So um, I was that close to telling them because it wasn't even, I, I was just over it. Like at that point, I was just over being pregnant. I wanted my baby to be out. I was over the labor part i just felt like nothing was happening like i felt like i was gonna be there all day the next day and i just wanted to get the baby out i felt like the process was had started wednesday night and is going into friday and the baby's not here yet i'm over it why is this taking forever so she checked me and then like an hour later another doctor came in and checked me and like i said i was only like five centimeters six centimeters still so I was just laying there like, oh, this is never going to happen. Mind you, in between that time, uh, after the doctor, the second, you know, the doctor, like the second time from checking me, I was like, babe, I'm so thirsty. They kept giving me these little bottles. You know, them little bottles of waters they give you. I was like, I'm so thirsty. I don't want no more little bottles of water. Can you just please go to the store and get me a big bottle of water? I just want a big bottle of water. So he's like, all right, I'm going to run to the store and get you a big bottle of water. Because it was like 12 something at night. None of the stores in the, um hospital was open the arm and the leg regular size water bottles out the vending machine no just go to the store and give me a big water bottle so it can last so he went to do that and i'm just laying there she um kept turning me in different positions you know try to um help the labor go a little faster she kept switching my positions which i like because they work obviously they work for me every time they work for me um so she kept tossing me turning me and I'm in the one position, and all of a sudden, I'm like, I feel like I got to poop. But you know, if you had had a baby before, you know, once you feel like you got to poop, it's time to push. I'm like, dang, I feel like I got to poop. But she said I'm not ready yet. She just checked me. I know I'm not ready yet, but I feel like I got to poop. I just need to get up, and I just need to go poop. So I'm trying not to push because I know, like, I'm not ready. She literally had just checked me, y'all. Just checked me. I'm telling you, this happened within 30 minutes. So I'm like, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just stick it out. I'm gonna hold it out. I know, you know, I don't gotta poop. I'm just ignore it. So I'm trying to ignore it, and I'm still in the position she want me to be in. But I'm like, uh, uh, I can't, I can't be in this position no more. So I turn on my back, I lay on my back. I'm trying to breathe, and then I'm kind of feeling nauseous, and I'm starting. I'm like, uh, uh, this is. Mm -mm. So I hit that call button. I said, let me call this nurse. She come in the room, and I'm like, look, I don't feel good. I don't feel the greatest. I really feel like I, I know she said I'm not ready yet. But I really feel like I got to poop. I just need to poop. I know, you know, she just checked me. And I know, because she was thinking the same thing, too. She was like, she just checked you, like, 30 minutes ago or 20 minutes ago. Like, mm -mm, she just checked you. So, she was like, well, I mean, I could get her to come back and check you again. I was like, yeah, I think she needs to. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm just sitting there like, oh, like, now it's really, I really feel the urge to, poop y'all like i really feel it now and she get she get there fast the doctor gets there fast mind you i never i'm never lucky enough to get my doc, actual doctor to deliver me so out of all three kids my doctor has never delivered me because plans never go right for me when it comes to having babies so anyways she gets there she checks me and she's like uh i think you're telling us i think you need to get a table ready y'all i went from five to ten and literally like 30 minutes or less, I went from five to ready to go. Mind you, babe, not back yet from the store because this happened so fast. He not back yet from the store because he had to drive a little bit further because the stores that I thought was open around the gas station wasn't open. So he had to drive a little bit further to a gas station that was open to get my water. So I call him and I'm like, babe, it's time. And he was like, I just pulled back in the parking lot and it's, like one something uh, he was born at 126 so it was one something in the morning and the front of the hospital is not open so he had to park in the back go through the emergency 
um, entrance, the ER entrance, go through the little scanner where they scan everything, go through the door. Somebody has to buzz you from the desk. Somebody has to buzz you in the door. Then you got to run, you know, all these corridors to the hall. It's not like the front of the building where you could just walk to the elevators that take you to the floors. So he trying to get up there as fast as he can. The lady's like, oh, you can push now. Mind y'all, I would have recorded this part, at least just like, so y'all can listen to it. But it happened so fast. I just called my mom and left my mom on the phone. I meant to call her and then screen record it. But I didn't even get that far. She told me, she's like, you can start pushing now. You know, we all in here. You can go ahead. If you feel the urge to push, you can go ahead and just start pushing. I'm like, no, not yet. Because I'm trying to wait for Bay to get up here. Because I don't want him to miss it. I know he don't want to miss it. So... I'm like, you know what, I got to push. I start pushing, and then he does get there in time. Everything, you know, goes smooth. I get him out, and of course, he's my first baby to come out crying. I got to do my um, skin to skin. I never got to do skin to skin when they first came out because both of my um, other two babies went straight to the NICU when they came out. So I got to do my skin to skin, which was so beautiful. And I really, you know, it was it was actually really a quick like it was it was a good labor. It wasn't bad. The pain from the first time to the third time is a big difference to me. Like them contractions was a like they weren't as not nearly as bad as the first time. Not nearly as bad as the first time. And I'm thinking I'm thinking that's because you know I knew I knew exactly what to expect kind of sort of when it came to the pain how it felt like I knew it what it was going to feel like and it wasn't that bad it wasn't so y'all that was that um and then after that is when I started dealing with getting my blood pressure down mind you I always have blood pressure issues on when I'm pregnant that's the only time I have them is when I'm pregnant usually right after I give birth and do all that a couple hours later Boom, my blood pressure is back to normal, no issues. But this time it didn't do that. The blood pressure issues, you know, they only come when I'm pregnant. And they usually go, like I said, right away after that. But this time it didn't do that. Um, Y'all, I stayed in the hospital from Wednesday all the way up until the following Tuesday. Mind you, the baby went home that Sunday. So I was a wreck, y'all. Like, I was in there. I would have got more footage, but I was a wreck in that hospital. I just wanted to go home every day. They was telling me, oh, you'll be discharged. You'll be discharged. But a couple hours later, coming back and saying, oh, um, the doctor said they can't let you go home today. So imagine thinking you're going home every day. But later on that day, every day, they say, no, you're not going home. So you don't go home. You're just there, you know. And I'm crying upset. My babies are home. I miss all three of my babies. They're home. I'm not home. Missing my husband. He's home. I'm not home. It was just crazy. But everything's getting better. Um, there's, they basically said the COVID and the preeclampsia is not. It's really hard to tell. Which is causing my blood pressure issues. So they just got to get it under control. I'm trying to do things like eat better. Find natural ways and stuff. To keep it down and help you know on my own so yeah other than that oh, well, other than that everything is going good i'm happy i'm enjoying my baby he's asleep right now Arias enjoying the baby cat don't care too much and hubby is enjoying the baby baby is doing great um so yeah if you have any questions let me know and also if y'all have any um tips on how to up your breast milk supply put them in the comments because that's one thing that i struggle with but it could just be i struggle with sitting down actually pumping because that's what i do i pump it's hard to sit down and actually pump when you have two toddlers and a newborn so yeah let me know in the comments if you do um hope you enjoyed this video thanks bye